Hey friends, welcome to Gemma Darling Daily Season 7, Episode 4. It's kind of like a half episode. I always feel like the episodes in between, the odd numbers, are kind of like the half episodes. I don't have much to show you today. Anyway, welcome to Gemma Darling Daily, where I am neither Gemma nor Daily, <laughs> nor a darling. Um, I'm very tired. <laughs> As you can see when I'm vlogging lately, I am very, very tired. I feel like something's like I'm coming down with something. I don't know. But I got a lot of knitting done today. And by a lot of knitting, I just mean I did one thing. <laughs> so um, today we're going to talk about my peace sign cardigan, how I bound off. And we're going to talk about the sleeves. I have a way of doing sleeves simultaneously with three needles that I want to show you. Um, I got a little bit of some new yarn. We have some new um, things that I've been watching and I just thought I would share what's going on in my life this week. So let's get into it. Um, this is a cardigan. It is a kaleidoscope cardigan. Kaleidoscope cardigan by Knit Collage. Um, I'm not sure exactly which designer. I'll put it here in the down bar. Um, I first made one as part of the knit along and it is, I think, by far one of their most popular patterns. It's just a really great, I wouldn't say raglan, it's more like a yoke sweater, but it's a cardigan. So um, just a, just your basic cardigan, but I decided, if you didn't see last episode, that I was going to put a peace sign on the back of it and I used a computer program to map out my peace sign and then I did it in color work. Now, most knit collage patterns when they're doing something like this either use intarsia or you can sew it right onto it because it's such a thick yarn that you can sew onto it after you're basically done with your basic knitting. Um, I decided to do color work. It wasn't super easy doing color work, but it looks really pretty. The only thing I would say, as I did say in my last episode, is that you do lose a lot of yardage to these floats, and Knit Collage is very expensive yarn. It's more of a luxury yarn, and so I wouldn't want to lose a lot of that to floats. Plus, these are two discontinued colors, and I lost them to floats. But look how cool it looks. I always like the inside. It looks cool, right? So now it's like a two-ply, and it's extremely thick. Another thing I wanted to tell you about my cardigan is that I finally bound off the bottom of it. And I was having trouble deciding which bind off I was going to use. Um, I decided to use the, I can never remember the name, the tubular bind off. Now, a tubular bind off, if you've never done it, is a quite tedious bind off. It's actually a sewn bind off. And there are probably, I think, six or seven steps, and then you just to getting, there's like six or seven steps to getting two stitches bound off. So you just have to basically keep going through those. You circle around through those six or seven stitches. Um, I'm sorry, six or seven steps and you will get two stitches bound off every time you go through it. So it does take a while to do, but when you're done, you're left with a really handsome um, bind off that is also pretty stretchy. Now, when you're talking about knit collage yarn, it doesn't behave the same as other yarns. It's more of like a roving kind of a yarn. Um, so at first I didn't under, I didn't know if I was liking the way that it was coming out. Um, but after a while I decided that I did like it. Um, so if you can see here, it kind of just ends, right? I did like a, uh, Let's see, remember last week we were talking about the rib and how I decided to make it even by doing a knit on each end and then doing purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two. And I did it all the way across um, so that it would have a knit on each end. Now, truthfully, the way that this came out at the end with this bind off, you really can't see it. But for me, I know it's it's even and that is it worth its weight in gold for my... Um, Again, not OCD, but it's like an ADHD kind of like, I need things to be a certain way or it just aggravates me. And so I really just love symmetry. Now I did the bind off. Um, and at first, again, I thought it looked really, really lumpy the way it was coming out. But I actually really like the way it looks because the whole sweater is obviously a nubby, like lumpy kind of um, sweater with the, with the, it's got yarn that gets thick and thin, right? So, you know, knit collage yarn is thick and then thin in places. And so the way it knits up is very like groovy. <laughs> um, so I like the way the bind off looks on it. It kind of just ends. I don't have some weird 
border on it. It just ends. And I think it looks quite handsome. And I'm very happy with the way that it came out. Um, it took me like all day. And when you're doing stuff like this with knit collage, since it is like a roving yarn that has a Stellina around it, um, when you're sewing and you're pulling it through stitches constantly, like you have to do it slow. Cause if you do it like quickly, you could break the yarn easily. Um, the yarn could just turn into big puffy nubs. It's like, you have to do it nice and slow. So I did it nice and slow and I'm very happy with the way that it came out. Um, obviously I need to weave in that end there, but I'm pretty happy. And I do think the one thing I would have changed is instead of doing, um, four rows of this, I would have done six to eight and just made that a little bit thicker so it was noticeable, but I didn't want the cardigan to be super long. Um, and since I had to start the peace line after all of the short rows up here, because I didn't know how to, I'm sorry, not short rows, they're, they're increases. Um, so I had to start it after all the increases ended because I didn't know how to do the color work in a panel with increases. Um, so as soon as the last increase row finished, I started the peace sign. But as you can see, it's a little lower than I would, I would like it to be. Oh, you're stuck on there. Okay. It's a little bit lower. So anyway, so, um, yeah, so towards the bottom, it's quite far down, but that's fine. I think since I have long hair, it actually just starts the peace sign kind of where my hair ends, which is nice because you know, sometimes you're wearing something and half of the cool pot stuff that's on the back is covered by your hair. Well, if you start whatever you want to put on the back of a cardigan, if you start it after all of the, um, the increases are done, it puts it in a nice spot. So hopefully next week we'll be able to try it on. Um, I can't do that right now because the scrap yarn is in the sleeve holes. So once that is out, um, then I should be able to, and I'm really excited to try it on. Um, but I love the way the peace sign came out. And so I'm going to be putting flowers all over it, which I actually think is really funny because this week Knit Collage had their photo shoot for their spring knit along. And basically one of the designs was a peace sign in flowers. And so I was like, I thought I was being all original and then they stole my thunder. <laughs> no, it's their thunder to begin with. Whatever. <laughs> um, I'm still going to make it because it's different. It's different than the one um, in the knit along. But if you do like what I'm doing here, I would join the spring knit along because you will have a lot of really boho options this spring and they're gorgeous. Um, there's one shawl that has all of these applique flowers on it and lots of fringe. And I think I'm going to end up making that. I love that. Um, and you know, Vanessa, one of my closest friends who I, I absolutely adore her. Um, she designed this really cool, like corset top vest kind of thing with like ruffles on it. It's amazing. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the tutorial. Well, it'll probably be at the end of this episode, but what I'm going to do is pick up all of these stitches that I put on this scrap yarn and I do it with these three needles. Now I understand People don't like to own three of the same needle, but when you are doing sleeves and you want to complain about Sleeve Island, let me tell you, three of the same needle absolutely helps you. You put one in one sleeve, you put one in the other sleeve, and then you keep knitting with the third one. So instead of having to do magic loop, which is really difficult with these really thick needles or having to use um, DPNs, which again, really stinks when they're really thick needles, you would take your old needle, which is in all of the stitches and you take the new needle that has nothing on it and you just knit and you knit and you knit and all of a sudden the new needles in the stitches and the old needle is free. And you take this and you go to the next side and you knit it into that side. And it actually makes it so nice to knit sleeves that way because you can just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and you will knit them both simultaneously and when you are done you are done and I extremely that is the way I knit sleeves I think sleeves are like sleeves and purling are curses upon knitters <laughs> and um so that's how I do it and it did the information I once came from my mom when she knits in the round um sometimes she puts 
like one in half of the stitches and this one in the second half of the stitches and you just you knit upon itself it replaces itself and then you knit the second half upon itself and it keeps it everything straight and I will show you that next time but today we're gonna do the um, sleeves so as soon as we get to that I will go and have us um, do that tutorial for right now we're going to talk about some yarn that I acquired today dropping everything all around my hair is not doing well today but you know what like I don't know I can't just live for good hair days can't <laughs> um, so I follow this person on Instagram and their name is Mothy and the Squid and I, I just thought it was a really really interesting screen name please go check out Mothy and the Squid um, the yarn is gorgeous um, they reside in the UK and I thought this was such a beautiful color because it's called, oh, let's see, I believe it's called Crocuses in the Snow. And for those of you that don't know, crocuses are these tiny purple, I think sometimes they're like yellow or pink, but they're most often, more often than not, they're purple. And there's these tiny purple flowers that come up at the dead beginning of spring. And every year when they would start to come up, my father would say, the crocuses are coming up. And I just, it's something that reminds me of him. And I really just, when I saw the name of this colorway, I just had to have it. And so um, I ordered four skeins of it. Let me show you. And it just arrived from the UK this morning. I got Royal Mail. I was so excited. So this is it. Very, very speckle heavy. Um, basically a white yarn with blue and purple speckles and I just think it's beautiful absolutely gorgeous um you know there's some there's some pink in there but more often just blue and purple really really pretty so I am gonna take this and do something really really cozy for myself with it I don't know what um I do have some really pretty purple Aran yarn I'm gonna have to check the weights I'm not sure if this is Aran um, I think it is because it's 166 meters to 100 grams. I don't think that's worsted. I don't know. Meters throws me off. I mean, it shouldn't because the metric system makes much more sense than using like pounds and inches and stuff that doesn't even relate to one another. But that's another story for another day. I mean, really, like we can't just use like kilometers or liters. Uh, anyway, so that was crocuses in the snow. And um, I also bought three skeins of this. I really don't remember buying three skeins of this. I have to check and make sure they didn't send me one too many skeins. It's called Winter Foliage. And it is this gorgeous, gorgeous green. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. So it's very, very speckled. I thought it was different. And I thought this would be so beautiful as like the top or bottom half of a sweater with some big bands of glazed pecan. You can see it. You can. I know you can. Really gorgeous. Look at that blue right there. So cool. So, Mothy and the Squid out there killing it. Check out their website and um, Instagram, at Mothy and the Squid. Okay, guys, who is watching Daisy Jones and the Six? Whoop. Um, I am. Now, does it give off almost famous vibes? Absolutely. It does. Um, I really, so I started reading the book because they let out two to three episodes. Let's see, the first three were the first week. Then the next three were the second week. And I think, think they're going to do two and two. I'm not sure if it's something that'll come back or if it's just the, they do, they're doing the book and that's it. I have to look into that. But um, this is a novel by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And it really is cool. It's definitely cool. It transports you to the 70s, makes you want to wear bell bottoms. Um, I mean, it's definitely good. And I really like that they cast Elvis's granddaughter in it. Um, I don't think she was cast because she was Elvis's granddaughter, though, of course, like, you know, how do you get that out of your head? 
she really holds her own in this movie. She really absolutely does. And there are times where she looks like her mom and times where she looks totally different. So I'm just kind of getting my mind blown by the whole thing. Um, I know that there's original music in it and I'm kind of comparing it to Stillwater from Almost Famous, but I loved Stillwater. I know it was a fictitious band, but it was written, the songs in Almost Famous were written by Peter Frampton and Nancy Wilson. And Nancy Wilson is married to Cameron Crowe. So that, I don't know if they're still married, but that was that. And um, so, I mean, music for the 70s written by Frampton and Nancy Wilson. Yeah, perfect. I mean, if you don't listen to Heart, what are you even doing with your life? Oh, Ann Wilson. Oh my God, her voice. The Kennedy Center honors when they did um, Led Zeppelin and she sang Stairway. Just, just, Go to that on YouTube and just sit there and listen to it. Her, she sings it so much better than Robert Plant. <laughs> so much better. Oh my God. Anyway, so I'm, I'm just like, I'm cavalling right now. <laughs> um, anyway, Daisy Jones and the Six is just really follows like a, like basically it's about Fleetwood Mac, which is why I wore my Stevie shirt today. Um, it's basically Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham. And if you don't know a lot about Fleetwood Mac, you don't know that you, you should know that they had a very tumultuous relationship. But when things were good, they wrote like the most beautiful music, the most excellent music. But when things were bad, it was just like nothing worked, nothing. And basically that's Jay-Z Jones and the Six. So I'm enjoying it. Andy and I love music. It's like the basis of our relationship. Um, I remember when we first started dating, he was very quiet. He didn't talk a lot. And so like going out to dinner would have been, it would have been the end of us if we were like, okay, let's get dressed up and go out to dinner. We weren't that type of couple. So ugh, my parents were in Florida. They used to go to Florida um, for like a month or two. Um, at the beginning of the year, like January and February. And I, when I still lived with them, I'd be alone for those months. And he came in the snow one night and we went out and there's this place in Montclair. Um, it's like a used bookstore and they have vinyl and the whole basement. I think now they moved it upstairs, but the whole damp, smelly basement was vinyl. And he and I spent hours in that basement looking at vinyl and it's like really, it's like he started talking and it was all because of music. Like he knew so much about music. And the boyfriend that I had before Andy didn't like anything. He liked Coldplay and Linkin Park, which I like Coldplay. I'm not like knocking it, but when that's all you like, like, dude, you need to look into life. Like you're not living. So, um, and I remember thinking like, I'm going to marry someone who doesn't like music. It was just so weird to me because my high school boyfriend is an excellent musician. He like built a guitar and wood shop. We used to go to concerts all the time. And then I dated this guy like in my twenties who just hated music. I don't even understand it. So when I met Andy, I was like this, I remember just breathing out. I was like, oh, these boys still do exist. Thank God. <laughs> so, ah, uh, yeah, he was the first boy I went after and, uh, I guess that went pretty well. So ladies, if you haven't locked things down yet, go and find the guy. Don't wait for him to come to you. Pick who you want. That's my PSA. So basically that was all I had to show you today. I did not have a lot. Um, I know that you guys have been really, really great at commenting on my vlogs and tuning in for everything that I'm putting out. And I hope that the content's a little bit riveting. <laughs> um, we cleaned a lot last week. I kind of love it when like my in-laws are like, we're coming because it just like lights a fire under the collective ass of this family. Um, my mom was doing like, my mom's very good though. She does a lot of stuff, but she was doing like like loads and loads of laundry she was helping me out like Andy was like cleaning the floor even the girls were like we don't want these toys anymore we don't want these ones and these ones and I was like okay you know put them aside so we cleaned I think pretty damn well but I'm just a cluttered person I'm always gonna have stuff around um but I have since started hanging things on the walls because I always have like picture frames leaning up against the walls and I'm like oh I'm gonna put this here I'm gonna put this on why don't I just do it because when it's on the floor leaning against my furniture, it looks awful. But when I put it on the wall, you know, much better. So I started doing that and I'm proud of myself. And that is a good feeling, right? Anyway, um, cookie season is coming to a close. It is mid-April. So if anyone wants anything, let me know now because I'm only going to be going down back to the cupboard like once or twice. And then that'll be done. 
um, for the season. And I have stockpiled such a vault of cookies in the basement just for myself. Like I bought them for myself. They're not the troops cookies. I have those in a separate location. Um, I have like two cases of lemon ups for myself and I've had them for about a week and I haven't opened them yet, which is making me really, really proud of my Those things are like, once I break that seal, it is over. Yeah, it's over. <sighs> what else am I watching? I know that, um, We've all been waiting for Ted Lasso season three. I really hope this is not the end. I really hope it is not. If you have not yet watched Ted Lasso though, please get yourself an Apple TV Plus subscription. I, you will not be sorry. They have such great things. I watch Truth Be Told. Um, they just have such great things on that app. Their originals are really, really great. And um, I would say that if you could only get one or two, I would get Hulu and I would get that. Netflix is good if you're a teenager, if you like teenage crap like I do. <laughs> I absolutely love teenage drama crap. Yeah, and supernatural shit. <laughs> and okay. Anyway, I am going to put the tutorial in here now on how to do the sleeves and I will see you next week where hopefully I will have a lot more to show you. I'm gonna do a lot of knitting this week. Um, I don't know what I'm going to, I just really want to finish this cardigan. So that's what I'll be working on. But I, I, I have so many other things that I want to cast on. So maybe we'll be doing that. And if you guys aren't already watching, please watch my vlogs. If you want a glimpse into the chaos that is my life and trying to just find a spot for all my crap. Okay, guys, thank you for tuning in. I know this was short, but I will see you next time. And please enjoy the sleeve tutorial. Let's go to the videotape. Hey friends, welcome to the triple needle sleeve tutorial. I'm your host, Danielle, and I'm going to show you guys how to make sleeves simultaneously using three of the same circular needles. Let's get started. Okay, friends, the first thing that we're going to do is lay out our whole sweater flat and find the two sleeves that we need to put the needles back into. Now, one of the things that I like to do when I'm doing this is to fold the sweater in such a way, you're gonna see my shadow here, um, in such a way that I really am only working with the sleeves and that the sweater is in a good condition, it's not crumbled up, um, so I can easily get to this sleeve or I can get to this sleeve. This is the point where sometimes, if you'd like, you can use a Lazy Susan um, that will turn, it will turn with your sleeve so as you're doing the knitting, you don't need to flop the sweater around. Find the sleeve that we want to knit on first. Here is the first sleeve. We're going to take out this yarn that we had as a placeholder and we're going to slip in one of these needles. Um, I am using, I believe, huh? Not exactly sure how long it is. It is a size 17 needle, which is what I used for the body of the sweater. And I'm going to do the sleeves in the same size. Now, sometimes the gauge will be different in your sleeve. So you do want to swatch to see what size you want to use for your sleeves. So I'm going to put the needles in here and the needles in there. Ready? Okay, so now we have both of our needles threaded back through, and we're gonna make sure we have the same number of stitches. Once you have the same number of stitches, you need to consult the pattern and knit your first row, and here is how you do it. Okay, both of these have 23 stitches, so what we're gonna do now is what the pattern says to do. It says to start from the middle of the underarm, pick up two stitches here, knit around, pick up two, and end in the center. We're gonna join for working in the round. I'm gonna get that done to these two and I will come back to show you how to thread in the third needle. Please note, each sleeve is gonna need its own ball. It's not something where you can have work off one ball of yarn. You're gonna need one for over here and one for over here. Okay, so I did both the sleeves here. I picked up the stitches that I needed to pick up. They both have 27 stitches and we're ready to show you the rest of the tutorial. Here, I like to put my knitting on a Lazy Susan. And this just makes it much easier to move around when I need this skein or I need the other skein. Now, if I'm working, I'm gonna work on this sleeve right here. So I'm gonna tuck this skein away into the knitting for right now so that I don't get confused 
and I'm gonna move this over so that I know I'm working with this. Put everything where it needs to be, and we're going to start working in the round. We take our next needle, the free needle, and we're going to use that. So this needle I like to pull tight, and I just kind of pull it under. Okay, so the stitches are all around it. We're gonna start here. But instead of using this needle onto itself, we're gonna thread this needle through it. So at the end, this will be in the knitting and this needle will be out. Now don't forget these are new stitches under here. So when they're new stitches, sometimes they get really, really big. See how big this is? So I'm fishing out the tail here so I can pull that. Okay, so now as we turn it around, you can pull this needle out so your stitches are nice and close. And you're just going to go on knitting with these. I find it easier to knit English style with bigger needles. So we're going to go through the entire thing. the new needle. Now, we're going to take this mess because let's face it, knitting sleeves makes a big mess in your yarn. Reposition everything. We just finished one on this side. Now we're going to do this side. And we're going to use this needle that we just freed. So we're gonna knit this entire round and then the needle inside this sleeve will be free and it will go back to the other side and we will continue to go back and forth until we've reached the desired sleeve length. But what's really great about this is that you also do not have to mark the beginning of the round because every time you switch needles, you know you've done one round. Every time you get over here and you get to this stitch, you have gone one round. So no, no need for a beginning of the round marker. No need to count the rounds. You're just going from one to the next and you're going back and forth until you have reached your desired length. Sometimes with bigger yarns, this will happen. It gets very spread out. In which case you just pull this needle, just pull the end of it and thread them all onto your needle this way and you just keep going. Now, if this needle's out real far and you can't reach it, slide it back and make it shorter and make it the length that you needed in order to keep going. Don't forget, you can always slide your needles within your stitches. Don't forget that. Every time I finish a sleeve, I like to take the ball of yarn and I stuff it inside the sleeve and it's there for the next time that I need it. Now, again, 
Repos reposition the knitting so you know what you're doing. And we're gonna go back to this sleeve. So you would just keep going back from this sleeve to that sleeve until you have the same length. And there you go. That's how you knit with a third needle. So I hope you understood my wacky tutorial. I probably should have done it with much smaller yarn, but I was just working on my knit collage. And so now I have both my sleeves started. And so I take the yarn ball when I'm not on that side and I stuff it right inside the sleeve hole unapologetically. <laughs> so they're both in the holes right there. See, it looks like a quarterback uniform and they're ready to stitch. So I have to say though, the Lazy Susan does work a lot better on thinner yarns. You can put it on your lap. Um, it does work better also when you're only knitting one sleeve at a time as opposed to two, um, but it does twirl around. Like if you can find a way to position your yarn so that the whole of your sweater is just sitting flat like this, then when, as you go around, it really does help when you're knitting. With the big yarn, sometimes it gets finicky. Um, so I'm just going to keep on knitting from one to the other, from one to the other. And every time you do, you take out this and you bring it to the next side and you use it in that stitch. Because if I were to try and just knit in the round, it just, it would stretch the stitches too much. So instead, you're just using a third needle and you're going in with the third needle. Kind of like when you... When you finish the body of a sweater and you're going to do the, the ribbing and you need to use a smaller needle, sometimes you would knit the smaller needle into it instead of just going into the stitches and, and preparing it. Sometimes I'll take the smaller needle and I'll knit into the other thing and then all of a sudden your smaller needle's inside and your bigger needle's out. That's kind of what it's like. Um, but I find it's very, very easy to knit sleeves this way because then you're going one, 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 one. And then all of a sudden you've got the length and you know you have the same number of stitches. Now, the one thing that you can do is every time you come to the end of a round right here, so you know that this is the beginning of the round right here because, let me stuff this in here. So every time you switch to the new needle, every time you finish the stitches, you know that this is the beginning of the round here which is why you don't need a stitch marker here, which is really, really great because I always drop that stitch marker and then I can't figure out what is the beginning of the round. But if you want to count the number of rounds you've done, every time you get to this last stitch, put a marker on it. And then when you go around again, you're going to pull a new loop through, put a marker on it. So before you switch again, when, as soon as you take these out, you know you're at the beginning of your round, put a marker on that. And then if something happens and you flip it around, you can't remember which side you were doing, you'll know how many stitches you have on one, how many you have on the other, how many rounds. All right, I hope you like the tutorial. I hope it made sense. See, I'm just a very sloppy knitting teacher, but I hope it made sense. If not, questions down below, I'll answer all of them. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me on the floor of the Gemma Darling Attic. Um, back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and you will give it a try. Hopefully it will make being stranded on Sleeve Island just a little bit more palatable. And I will see you guys next week with an all new episode of Gemma Darling Daily, where we will hopefully have a lot more to share. Have a great week, guys. Be the change you want to see in the world.